Dear friends in Christ, thank you for gathering with us tonight. Let us, in a spirit of humility, vulnerability, and honest and authentic searching, proclaim our grief, our complicity, and our will to change the world around us in our hearts, in our homes, and in our neighborhoods, so that all God's children may know life and know it in its abundance. Let us pray. O God, in whose image the whole human family was created, we pray for all whose lives have been forever altered by racial violence. In particular, today, we remember George Floyd, beloved child of God. Swaddle him in your boundless love. Cradle, Cradle him, him, in, your him in your peace. Yeah, they can't show. We remember George Floyd's family and friends, beloved children of God, each one. <coughs> Swaddle them in your boundless love. Cradle, Cradle, Cradle them, them in your, your peace. peace. We remember the residents of South Minneapolis, beloved children of God, who have seen their community disrupted by horrific violence. Swaddle them in your boundless love. Cradle them. Cradle them in your peace. We remember the protesters, beloved children of God, the 20,000 who marched the day after George Floyd's death, and those still gathering across the city, the state, and the country to demand justice and change. Swaddle them in your boundless love. Cradle them. Cradle them in your peace. We remember the residents of East Lake Street and the surrounding neighborhood, beloved children of God who have seen their neighborhood host terrifying violence and astonishing destruction. We remember those who have watched their livelihoods and places of work go up in flames. Swaddle them in your boundless love. Cradle them, Cradle them, Cradle them in your peace. We remember the man killed during the riots of this past week, a beloved child of God, as yet unnamed in his story, yet unknown. Swaddle him in your boundless love. Cradle him, Cradle him, Cradle him in your peace. peace. We remember the black community of Minneapolis, beloved children of God, who have for decades cried out against injustice and brutality at the hands of the Minneapolis police and who have not been heard by those with the power to make change. We remember our black brothers and sisters groaning under the weight of redlining, segregation, underfunded schools, unequal economic opportunity, indignity, and ever-present fear. Swaddle them in your boundless love. Cradle them. Cradle them in your peace. We remember the residents of the Rondo neighborhood of St. Paul, beloved children of God, a flourishing black community bulldozed to make room for a highway. Swaddle them in your boundless love. Cradle, Cradle them, them in your peace. We remember the residents of North Minneapolis throughout the histories of that city, a home to marginalized communities, beloved children of God all. We remember the destruction and the segregation that were caused by the construction of two highways that cut North Minneapolis off from the rest of the city. Swaddle them in your boundless love. Cradle them, them in your peace. We remember our public officials, beloved children of God, managing a global pandemic and a citywide criticor at once. Swaddle them in your boundless love. Cradle them, Cradle them, them in, in your peace. peace. 
We remember our police officers, beloved children of God, whom we ask, often without appropriate training, to respond to human beings in their worst and most vulnerable moments. We remember the police officers who feel their loyalties divided or their cause unclear, who feel afraid for themselves, their brethren, their families, and their fellow citizens. Swaddle them in your boundless love. Cradle them, them in your, your peace. peace. We remember every citizen of Minneapolis, of St. Paul, and of Minnesota, beloved children of God. We have been traumatized, grief-stricken, enraged, and heart-sickened by the video of one neighbor slowly snuffing the life out of another, by riots and looting, by the sounds of flashbang grenades and the sting of tear gas, the scent of smoke, and by our own helplessness. Bottle us in your boundless love. Cradle us in your peace. We remember those who have pledged their lives to racist ideologies, beloved children of God. We acknowledge the pain they have caused to victims of violence, to their communities, to their families, and to their own souls. We acknowledge that each of us carries racist ideology within us, and we beg your mercy to free all your people from it. Swaddle us in your boundless love. Cradle us in your peace. We know that the sickness of racism is in this nation's very bedrock. Today, we acknowledge and repent of the twin original sins of this nation, the genocide of the indigenous people of this land and the institution of chattel slavery. We know that the shockwaves from these sins still reverberate today, that the trauma from these sins live in our bodies and that the pain we suffer now has its origin in those first treacheries. Help us turn away from the sin of division. And toward, and toward your all-encompassing love. We repent of laws that codify our, or allow unequal treatment based on race, ethnicity, religion, or skin tone. We repent of promises broken again and again. We repent of foreign policy that sees more value in some human lives than in others. Help us turn away from the sin of division. And toward, and toward love, your all encompassing love. love. We repent of the role of the church historically and presently in some supporting and emboldening these policies. We repent of the ways that we have made your church a home to oppression, exclusion, or indignity for any child of God. Help us turn away from the sin of division. And toward, and toward your all-encompassing love. love. We acknowledge and repent of the fact that Minnesota has never shared its abundance equally. Our state is home to some of the worst racial disparities in the nation in scholastic achievement, em employment, household wealth, home ownership. Help us turn away from the sin of division. And toward, and toward your, your all-encompassing love. love. We repent of the ill use of your bounty. We hoard land and wealth manipulate plants and animals, abuse your creation, and your most vulnerable people suffer the consequences. Help us turn away from the sin of division. And for your all-encompassing love. We who benefit from white supremacy acknowledge that we have been given unearned privilege at the expense of our indigenous, black, Asian, 
Latin, brown-skinned, immigrant, and non-Christian siblings. We repent of the ways in which we have allowed our own fear, complacency, and incuriosity to blind us to the belovedness of your children, each like us, fearfully and wonderfully made. Help us turn away from the sin of division. And toward, and toward your all-encompassing all love. love. O oh God of infinite affection, you looked at all that you have made and called it good. By your grace, help us to look upon your creation and to see with your mothering eyes of love how good, how good, how good it is. Lord, in your mercy. Christ, Christ in, in your mercy. mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. And now let us pray using the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in, art heaven, in heaven, hallowed, be, hallowed be, thy be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy, come, thy will, thy will be, be done. Earth, on earth as it is in as heaven. Give us this, us this day our daily, daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, and forgive forgive us our trespasses our as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The, the power of thine, thine is the kingdom, the power, and the, power and, the and the glory, forever and ever. And ever. Amen. 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 Friends, I'm going to press the mute button now, but I would encourage you as we bid prayers here in these final moments to voice the prayers, request the concerns of your heart, especially for our city and for our neighbors in the chat function to the right of your screen. Let us now pray for the needs of this community and for all those affected by violence and racism. Lord God, we pray to you this night for this city, for St. Paul and Minneapolis, for this faith community, St. John the Evangelist, for the breaking hearts in our neighborhoods, for the breaking hearts for those who are looking upon our city from afar and who are being traumatized by the images of violence and destruction. We pray this night for our friends and families, for the ways in which racism has infected our homes and our hearts. For what else and for whom shall we pray? We pray for courage for all essential workers. Pray for vulnerability and the ability to stay open in heart, to act on what the spirit is calling us to do. For coworkers, especially those in North Minneapolis. Help us to bridge the gap between our communities. For ears to hear and grace to pray for our enemies. For healing in our torn community for the Holy Spirit to blow through the halls of our leadership. We pray for our governor, our mayors, our Congress and our president. Where there is hubris and hardness of heart, we ask Lord that you soften it. Where there is ignorance and blindness, we ask for your light to shine. Where there is darkness, we proclaim your love. Pray for all children who will suffer from this trauma for years, for their healing. Let us pray. 
eternal God in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn but the sword of righteousness, no strength known but the strength of love. So mightily spread abroad your spirit that all peoples may be gathered under the banner of your just peace as children of one God and one parent to whom be all dominion and power and glory now and forever. Amen. O God, our creator, whose son forgave his enemies while he was suffering shame and death, strengthen those who now suffer for the sake of their conscience and for the work they do for justice. When they are accused, save them from speaking in hate. When they are rejected, save them from bitterness. When they are imprisoned, save them from despair. And to us, your servants, give grace to respect their witness and to discern the truth that our society may be cleansed and strengthened. This we ask for the sake of Jesus Christ, our merciful and righteous judge. Amen. O oh God, you have bound us together in a common life. Help us in the midst of our struggles for justice and truth to confront one another without hatred or bitterness and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All these prayers and petitions for the forgiveness of our sins and for the will and the power to work for good, we ask your presence, Holy Spirit, and we pray in the name of our Savior and Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, I thank you for being with us tonight. In this time here following the service, you're free to, uh, if it's better for you to close the night in prayer and uh, to sign off, you're welcome to do so. But in just a few moments here, just a minute or two, I want to share a little bit about what it is that St. John's is committing to do in the days ahead. Um, but first, a word about doing something in the days ahead and about the nature of doing in and of itself. Um, the, the right that we have just undertaken together of confessing and uh, bidding God's uh, forgiveness for our complicity, particularly those of us in the white community in the sins of racism can feel deeply, deeply uncomfortable and unsettling. I have found in my ministry and perhaps you have in your own life that in particularly in communities that identify as somewhat progressive or open-minded to be told that we all struggle with the sin of racism can feel incongruous because each of us would like to think of ourselves as good people who do good things. And indeed, I look around at the gathering here tonight and I see good people. But each of us have benefited if we, uh, by the, t the color of our skin and no other, in a system that was built for us and not for others who look differently from us. And every time we have benefited and not confronted that system, we have been silent in the face of injustice and are in part complicit in that sin. And so it is with so many other kinds of sin, greed and, uh, and hatred and uh, all kinds of other ways that we violate our human dignity uh, that the sin of racism is often insidious and hard to notice. So in the days ahead, we will be doing something. I know that there is hunger to take concrete action, to march, to donate funds, to clean up our neighborhoods, to get educated about racism and where it resides in our society, to get out the vote, to... Um, write letters and rattle cages of elected officials for justice. And let me commend all of those ways to you. If you need to take action, please do. But do not let your action taking turn you aside from the work that each of us needs to do to notice where we are a part of a system of injustice, to understand the legacy and history of racism and white privilege and white supremacy. The more we know the better we understand this story, the more likely we are to not repeat it again, the more likely we are to not ignore or just outright miss the stories of our black and brown neighbors, all of whom have been shouting, I can't breathe. 
So in the days ahead, St. John's will be convening a conversation. Uh, one will be for white members of the congregation to get together to talk about uh, systemic racism, white privilege, and white supremacy, and how it roots itself in our individual lives. It'll be a safe space for us to talk with each other and not have to uh, bear our souls in ways that our black and brown brothers and sisters feel like they need to hear our pain and, and tend to us. It'll be a space for us to tend to one another and get our lives in order. And at the same time, a conversation will be convened for our black and brown members of St. John's and anyone that they'd like to invite, uh, an opportunity for them to be together in solidarity and to uh, nourish one another in face of all the trauma and re-traumatizing that has happened in the past days from the news we've seen and from just the story of George Floyd. Our understanding is, is that if we can do this work apart, we will be better together. The ultimate goal of Christian community, the ultimate goal of the gospel is that we would be one, just as the Father and the Son and the Spirit are one. I know many of you want to see that oneness lived out, and I want to be a part of making and reconciling our community within the wider community, bringing black and white, uh, immigrant and local together. But in order to do that, just like in Al-Anon and AA, we've got to take care of our side of the street. And so we're going to offer opportunities for you to do that. If you're interested, please reach out to myself or to Craig. Um, we're going to be convening that conversation middle of this month and seeing where it can go. In the meanwhile, our Facebook page is going to continue daily to have one thing per day that you can do, whether it's make a donation, whether it's clean up your neighborhood, whether